And we thank you today, Lord, that you've given us every resource that we need to hear your word, to understand your word, to get revelation knowledge from your word, and to apply your word to our lives, and to make this life, this land, this town, this city a better place. Because wherever we go, Jesus goes with us. We thank you and we praise you. In Jesus' name, let the church say amen. amen. Praise God. We're going to be talking today about living right in a world gone wrong. This is a third part of this for me. And uh, I'm just so grateful that as much as I study this and the Lord reveals things to me, God knows. God knows when you see yourself. My Lord, my God. There's a song that we sing here at Outreach. Um, my wife and I play it <laughs> just about round the clock in our house. I might ask Minister Willie if he'll sing it at the end of the service, but the song makes a statement, a declaration about who God is. Song says Waymaker. Miracle worker. Promise keeper. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. In the darkest of the darkest places, a light in darkness. Then it goes on to say, My God, that is who you are. And let me tell you something. That brings hope to us. It gives us confidence. It enlightens us. It empowers us. When everything seems like it's going wrong, we can think about the character of God and it gives us hope. Yes. Even when we don't feel it. Even when we don't see it. Even when we don't hear it. But what I want to talk about today is another part of that. The part that says that when us, the believers, still sometimes have to struggle. Uh -huh. That we have this God who is a way maker. Anybody know how he made a way out of no way for you? I mean, there was no way. You had exhausted all of your resources. And God made a way. But today I want to talk about this part of how to live right in a world gone wrong is we have that hope. Amen. That hope lives in us. Amen. But there are people that have no hope. Amen. And within that hope that God gave us, he gave us a charge, a commission. In fact, it's a great commission. He told us to go ye therefore into all the world and to tell somebody about this hope. It just doesn't seem right that we can come into this compound of this holy place and have the Holy Spirit that lives within us and helps us to get by these days, day by day by day. Do how many know that the world has evil in it today? Listen to me. People got sick people in the hospital. The hospitals are overflowing. They can't even go visit them because of the, the disease and the stuff that's in the air. You can't drink the water. The climate is killing us. The economy is bad. People are getting sick and people are dying. People are still on crack. No crack don't seem to be in the news no more. There's still people that are addicted to drugs. There are people that are addicted to alcohol. There are people that are addicted to sex, all kinds of things, and they have no hope. But we have this hope in us. Wherever we go, Jesus goes. When we go to work, the hope that they need is in us. And Jesus has called us, called us, commissioned us to go forth in this dying world and tell somebody that hope is available. You know why people commit suicide? They have no hope. They can't see a future. But yet we have this way maker, miracle worker, promise keeper, light in darkness. Now I'm going to show you today what the Lord showed me. And 
one of the first things he told me is to tell the people to recognize that you are the most important people on the face of the earth. Not so much the president or the emperor or the king or the pope or the richest or the smartest. You and I are the most important people on the face of the earth. You know why? Because only the born again believer can communicate the love of God, the salvation of God, the healing of God. The deliverance of God to the people that do not know him. We read all of the examples that are in the Bible, but let me tell you today, Paul is not here. Matthew is not here. John is not here. Isaiah is not here. Jeremiah is not here. You and I are here. This is our time. And God is not only dependent on us, he is expecting us to go forth in this world and make a difference. Amen, amen. I know that we need help, but we have help. I know that we need hope, but we have hope. I know we need a way. We have a way maker. I know we need miracle. We know the miracle worker. I know that we need a promise keeper. We know the promise keeper. I know that sometimes we fall in the darkness, but we know the light of darkness. In fact, Jesus Christ himself said, I'm not only going to call you to go out, but I'm going to tell you something. Who else you are? Not only the most important people in the world, but you are the light of the world now. Not that we have, listen, not that we have this power, but that his light is reflected through our lives. I want you to turn your Bibles to John chapter 9. Most important people in the face of the world. John chapter 9. This was nearing the end, not only of Jesus' ministry, but he was really near to the cross day. The scholars have said that this is probably somewhere within weeks or even a month before he was to be crucified. And Jesus began to teach his disciples of how we were to live in a world gone wrong. Come on, come on. And I want you to see, as John describes how this scene went by, the mistakes that we make sometimes when we have an opportunity to show the world that Jesus is alive. John chapter 9 started at the beginning, sir. Verse 1. And as Jesus passed by, he saw a man which was blind from his birth. Hold on. Just don't go too fast. First of all, the blind can't see Jesus. Jesus saw the blind man. And when we look at people the same way that Jesus looked at them, we will see the blind of this world. Jesus saw this blind man, read on, who was, listen, who was blind from birth. That's big. Yes, it is. That's big because, see, this is something nobody can explain. Nobody can explain why this happened. And I'm going to tell you what we do. Let me let, it, let, him, let, me let him read it. Read on a little bit further. He's blind from birth. And his disciples asked him, saying, Master, who did sin, this man? or his parents, that he was born blind. This is, this is not just in, in sickness or blindness. This is anything we do. We see people, and immediately we try to figure out why they're in the situation that they in. Come on, man. Come on now. Somebody going to help me out this morning. You, you, you know how you get in your car, and you get to that corner where that guy got that sign, and he's starting to come towards your car and you want him to go away. You want that light to turn green so you can move on because you done already decided in your mind that this man, all he's trying to do is get a drink, get a drug. He can get a job. Look at him. We're not supposed to try to figure out how they, how they got to be where they are. You know how they got to be that way? Because of sin and because of Satan. We don't have to figure that out. We have the answer that that person is looking for. 
I'm going to show you in a little while. What that person asked you for, it might not be what he really needs. Well, you got what he needs. The blind man. Here, the disciples are walking with Jesus. They have seen Jesus heal. They have seen Jesus raise the dead. They have seen him perform miracles. And wouldn't you think when he walked over to the blind man, somebody might want to shout and say, Whoa, glory to God, this man can get healed. No. What did they ask? Master, who did sin, this man or his parents, that he was born blind? You got you to grab that. Because that's what we do. We can look at a person with our natural eye. And we begin to figure out. Mm -hmm. I know how you got here. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. You're mean. You're nasty. You know people on your job? Mean and nasty. Uh, and when something happened to them, when they get into a situation, do you look to show them the answer that lies within you? Or do you look to say, you know what? I know why you, you reap what you sow. These people thought that because the scripture said, hey, sin can come down through four generations. Maybe that's what's happening. Now listen to this one. They also believed in these times that a baby, if a child was born with a defect or an illness or something, he had to do something. The baby sinned in the womb. That's what his punishment was. That's why they asked, who sinned? Him or his parents? Now look at the answer that Jesus gives to them. What the answer they were looking for? Read. Verse 3. Come on, come on. Jesus answered. What did he say? Neither had this man sinned, uh -huh. nor his parents. Okay, it doesn't matter. That's what he was saying. It doesn't matter. But I'm telling you right now, I'm telling you, you can't figure out how this person got here because that ain't none of your business how he got here. You have the answer within you. That's what I want you to see. That the answer, I am Jesus, I am with you, and I can do something about this situation. Stop spending so much time trying to figure out how you got to be where you are. Know who lives inside of you. Read. Neither have this man sinned, nor his parents. Well, come on, tell them why this, why this man was this way. But, but that the works of God oh, should be Lord. made manifest in him. Jesus Christ, did you hear what he said? He's not saying that God put sickness on this man. He said sin brought sickness into this world. The devil brought sickness into this world. But I had this man have this thing and allowed him to have it to this very day that I might get glorified. That somebody can see what I can do when somebody let me do work. Read. Verse 4. I must work Jesus. the works of him that sent me while it is day. The and night cometh no, when no man, no man can work. It's the same thing with you and I. Yes. We must work while it's still day. Yes. Because the one that sent us gave us work to do, saints. We can't keep spending a lot of time trying to get ourselves right. And we got to get right at some time and go out and help somebody else. Oh, Glory to oh, God. Oh, Glory to God. I know we go through things. I know what life is. Everybody in this room is going through something. Amen. But we have hope. Amen. We have the word. We have his spirit that lives inside of us. But what about that man that don't have nothing? What about that woman that don't have nothing? And we walk, walk right past him and don't say a word. We walk right past him and don't see a thing. We walk right past him. God is saying, I'm reminding you this morning. You're the most important people. And the way you live in this world makes a difference. Amen. Live right in a world going wrong. Amen. Live right. This is more. It's more than just obeying the word. That's, the, that's our reasonable service. It's fulfilling your purpose. Hey! It's fulfilling hey! your purpose. God said, I sent. You think he just created you and birthed you just to pick up room on the earth? Every one of us, when he molded us in our mother's womb, he had a purpose for our life to Amen. do something, to fulfill something. Live right. The world gone wrong. 
When the world is dark and we live right, we, we illuminate ourselves just like a shining bright light. Right. The world is always looking for an answer. Glory to God. Read on, my friend. Verse 5. As long as I am in the world, I am the light of the world. Verse 6. When he had thus spoken, he spat on the ground. Uh-oh and made clay of the spittle. I guess that man had to be blind because if he had saw him spit in the dirt and was going to get ready to rub it on his, on his eyes, he might change his mind. <laughs> ain't, ain't, that, ain't that a peculiar way of doing something? God's way is just not our way, is it? Why did he have to do that? Don't, don't worry about it. Don't worry about those things. Let those things take care of themselves. Just know that the master is doing something. Glory to God. Just know that he's doing something. That's what he's trying to show us right now. It, look, it might look a little weird. It might sound a little weird. But just if you know me, I'm a way maker, miracle worker, promise keeper, and I'm a light in darkness. I'm doing something. So he spit, he spit, he spit in the clay and wallowed it up. And what did he do, bro? And he anointed the eyes of the blind man with the clay. Good Lord of mercy. Seven. And said unto him, Uh huh. Go, wash in the pool of Siloam, which is by interpretation sent. He went his way, therefore, and washed, and came seeing. Oh, my Lord. Listen, listen, listen. To us, that should blow our mind. That's the kind of God we serve. Amen. See, that, that, it, it, the, the miracles, they, they, we, we see them, we have them, we want them. But the miracles ain't really for us. The miracles is for the world to see that they may glorify our God. Amen. It shouldn't have been no surprise that this man saw. This is the same Jesus that these disciples saw. Raise up the dead to live. He caused the, the, the wind and the sea to obey him. Shouldn't be no big thing for him. But this man can't see it. And, 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 and you gotta pay attention to this because this is what happened to us to discourage us. To get put, put doubt in our mind. Listen to what happened. This is the church coming up. Read on. Verse 8. The neighbors, therefore, and they which before had seen him that he was blind said, is not this he that sat and begged? Verse 9. Some said, this is he. Others said, he is like him. But he said, I am he. <laughs> I'm going somewhere with this. Come on now. See, 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 see. Some say, oh, that can't be him. Uh-uh. Ain't no way in the world. Why? Because he was blind from birth. There was no cure. I've never seen anybody get cured that was blind from birth. We tried everything. We prayed. We put sobs on it. We used herbs and everything else. We, 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 the, 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 the thing we came up with is this man had to sin or his parents had to sin. That's why he's like that. That's why you can't overturn it because God put this on it. And we ain't changing our mind. Because we're right. We're the church. So they're trying to figure out now what's been done. Read on. Verse 10. This is good. Therefore said they unto him, uh -huh. How were thy eyes open? Okay. 11. He answered, What did he say? A man that is called Jesus. Listen here. Listen here. Listen here. Whenever, whenever you born again believers in Christ, do the work of God and use the name of Jesus to let them know who did the healing, who did the delivering, who did the saving, who did the encouraging. They will not forget who delivered them. They won't forget it. He was blind, but he sure could heal. He know who touched him. I can imagine that man after all them years. He had never seen anything. 
all the stuff we take for granted today. He had never even seen how a hand looked. Uh -huh. Everything he knew was from feeling. Everything he never knew what a sunrise looked like. He never knew what a real river looked like or a boat or whatever. But this day, this man from Galilee, he said he spit in the ground and began to put mud and rub it in and anoint his eyes. And that man said, you know what? I'm going to try this. I'm going to try this. You know why? Because at last I have hope. Everybody else has just been telling me you're going to be a blind beggar all your life. Every week, every day, they would bring him to the church and set him outside so that he could beg for a living. But this day that man said, something different about this. Something different about this man. And he had hope. And now he has his sight. And then he just got his sight. And instead of the people rejoicing, uh -huh. instead of them being happy, they trying to figure out is he did it really happen? Right. Read on. <laughs> Verse 11. He answered and said, A man that is called Jesus made clay and anointed mine eyes and said unto me, Go to the pool of Siloam and wash. And I went and washed. It, that means he was obedient to what God said. God, 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 God told him, somebody go get me a wash basin. He told him where to go and where to wash. And he followed that. Why? Because it was hope. He had hope. Go ahead. And I went, washed, and I received sight. Twelve. Listen. Then said they unto him, where is he? He said, I know not. 13. They brought to the Pharisees him that after time was blind. 14. And it was the Sabbath day. Uh -huh. When Jesus made the clay and opened his eyes. 15. Then again, the Pharisees also asked him how he had received his sight. Y'all know what's going on right there, right? Yeah. The Pharisees had already made some rules and some laws. Uh -huh. Ain't no healing on the Sabbath uh -huh. day. Ain't no working on the Sabbath day. And if you do that, you must be not of God. You must be of the devil. Uh -huh. So they questioning the man. Because already, they already know, they didn't heard about Jesus. He's starting to gain some fame and it's starting to make them feel a little bit uncomfortable. They're supposed to be the top dogs in the land. Who is this guy named Jesus coming, a cop of the sun, coming around here showing us up doing things? So we got to put him down. We got to stop him. Let me tell you, on your job, your next door neighbor, your neighborhood, I don't care if you go to the grocery store. If you walk with Jesus Christ, ain't nobody going to be able to put you nowhere. <laughs> Read on. Therefore said some of the Pharisees, this man is not of God. Because he keepeth not the Sabbath day. Do, do you see how, how some, a man telling Jesus he's not of God when he is God? Oh, cool, he but, but, but church, this is how confused the church can get when we don't have our eyes on Jesus. On we can start to lean to our own understanding. And you see what this is going to get you? Nowhere. But let's see if God still get glorified in this. Let's see if the, if, if, the, if the world can stop what Jesus just did for this man. He said that this man was made, look here, this man was allowed to be this way so that he could be glorified. The Bible says that Jesus Christ was made manifest that he, we might destroy the works of the devil. So let's see who went out right here. Three. This man is not of God because he keepeth not the Sabbath day. Others said, how can a man that is a sinner do such miracles? Boy, and there was a division among them. Boy, Jesus got the people talking, don't he? Huh? Wherever Jesus go, I'm going to tell you, wherever Jesus show up at, it's going to be some controversy. It ain't going to never be the same once he get there and show up. So they, they divided now. They were like, how, how in the world, hey, if he the devil, how can he do this? Well, we're going we'll to see. Look, 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 look at why it doesn't make any difference with all of this stuff that people will be saying. Mm -hmm. You know how sometimes on your job, you might, you might feel like, you know, getting up and asking somebody they want prayer. And something tell you, you say, no, nah, I didn't do that. 
My boss is an atheist and I, I do need a raise. I don't want, you know, I don't want, you know, God said don't be the author of confusion. I don't want, I don't want to start nothing. I won't start nothing here, you know. I, I got to go pray about it. I'm going to call Dr. Betty and see what she's saying. And, and uh, yeah, look, don't try to figure it out. How do I know that I'm the one that's supposed to do something? Because you're there. Come on, come on. God got you where you are. That you, you see it. You're there, you see it, and he's in you and with you. Amen. Read on. This, this it is. They say unto the blind man again, What sayest thou of him, that he hath opened thine eyes? He said, He is a prophet. 18. But the Jews did not believe concerning him, that he had been blind, and received his sight, until they called the parents of him, that had received his sight. And called his parents. Go ahead and read. I'm going to 19. Read and they asked him, saying, Is this your son, who ye say was born blind? How then doth he now see? 20. His parents answered them and said, What did he say? We know that this is our son, and that he was born blind. 21. But by what means he now seeth, we know not. Or who hath opened his eyes, we know not. He is of age. Ask him. He shall speak for himself. Come on. Come on. Who Jesus touched will be able to speak for themselves. Watch this. So go real quick. Go. 22. These words spake his parents because they feared the Jews. Okay. For the Jews had agreed already that if any man did confess that he was Christ, he should be put out of the synagogue. My Lord, my God. 23. Hold on now. I got a few minutes. I'm going to get this in. I mean, I don't, you on your job. Uh -huh. And the Bible says if you be ashamed of him. Uh -huh. you be ashamed of him. He put you here to make a difference. Go down to where they asked the boy again. And what was his reply? Listen to this. 24. Then again called they the man that was blind and said unto him, Give God the praise. Listen. We know that this man is a sinner. They were saying give God the praise by saying Jesus was a sinner. That was going to glorify God to them. Read on. 25. He answered and said. Listen, listen. Whether he be a oh, sinner or no, God, God. I know not. But what? One thing I know. One thing I know. Whereas I was blind. I used to be blind. Now I see. You can say what you want, but I know something. Jesus has touched my life. He made a difference. That's all that counts, brothers and sisters. That's all that counts, brothers and sisters. It don't make no difference what nobody else think about the situation, how you got healed, how you got delivered. You know what Jesus has done for you. Now, I'm going to show you real quick. I got a couple of minutes. I want you to go to Acts 3. And I'm going to show you that I can prove that the disciples, they learned from Jesus this day. Acts chapter 3, starting the first verse. Listen to this. My Lord. Now, my Peter God. and John uh -huh. went up together into the temple at the hour of prayer. Listen to this thing. Being the ninth hour. And a certain man, uh -huh. lame from his mother's womb. Hold on, hold on now, hold on now. Not blind this time. But the man is crippled. He's been crippled from birth. Same situation. That before the disciples started to ask and go, well, who sinned? His mother and father, or did he sin? But not this time. The disciples and Peter have learned something. Go ahead, brother, read. And a certain man, lame from his mother's womb, was carried, whom they laid daily at the gate of the temple, which is called Beautiful. Can you imagine? To ask alms of them that entered into the temple. Every day, somebody had to pick you up and carry you. Because you can't walk and set you down. And you're just begging for alms, begging for money, so I can make it through the day. 
That's the way people are living today, things. It might not be they begging for this. That person that's on the corner that got a pocket full of money selling drugs, he is dying every day in his spirit. And he don't know that there's hope for him. There's a new life for him. There's a new way for him. But you know what? We'll look at that person that's on the corner begging, just walking up to the car. And you might say, you know what? I ain't got no money today. And that's really good because I'm telling the truth, Lord. I ain't got no money in the car. Look at what Peter said when he was confronted with that situation. Read three. Who seeing Peter and John about to go into the temple asked an alms. Uh -huh. Four. And Peter, fastening his eyes upon him with John, he saw. Said he saw. Listen, he saw this man the way Jesus saw that blind man, a man in need. Okay. Read. Said, look on us. Five. And he gave heed unto them, expecting to receive something of them. Listen, the man was expected to get some money. That's what he felt that he needed. I need some dough. I need money to be able to live, to buy some food. I need money. What did, what did Peter say, brother? And Peter said, What did he say? Silver and gold. I ain't got none. no money. But such. But, but let me tell you. I, I do have something. Uh -huh. I, I don't have the money. I do it. And even if I had the money, here, buy you something to eat. But I got something else for you. Uh -huh. I got something else for you. Read on, brother. But such as I have give, I thee, in the name of Jesus That's Christ that. of Nazareth. Don't, don't miss it. Don't miss it. Rise up. Don't miss it. And walk. Don't miss it. He gave that man something that only a born again believer could give that man. He came and he told that man, he said, silver and gold I do not have today. He said, but I tell you, I got something. I got something, there's something that I got, I'm going to give it to you. He didn't say in the name of Peter, in the name of Paul. He said, in the name of Jesus. Because he understood what was in him. He understood what the man really needed. Because he saw the mind, he saw the man through the eyes of Jesus. Not through our eyes, not a crippled beggar, not a sinner, hopeless sinner, not a harlot, not a prostitute, not an evil person, not a drug dealer, not a drug user. I'm looking at you through the eyes of Jesus. You're telling me you want one thing, but I'm telling you I'm going to give you another. And that which I give you this day, you won't have to thirst no more. You won't have to hunger no more. You can change your life. Somebody did that to us, saints. Somebody told me about Jesus. Somebody urged me to come to church. Somebody went home and prayed for me. I'm the evidence of that. It, it is, ex, I mean, it is extremely wrong for me not to pass that blessing on to another human being. Right right you might not have all of the smarts and all of the money and all of the resources. You might not have the biggest house or the finest car, but I tell you, you got something if you are born again, believer in Jesus Christ. You have something that this world needs. The world needs a way maker, a miracle worker. They need a promise keeping God. They need to be shown the way out of darkness into this light. So I ask you today, if there's somebody here today that do not know Jesus Christ, you can have hope today. This very, this very moment. You don't have to wait no longer. You don't have to tarry, you don't have to cry out, you don't have to, all you gotta do is have the willingness of heart to accept the Lord Jesus Christ as your Savior. Accept the Lord while there's time. Accept the Lord while there's time. If there's someone here today, anybody that want to come to the altar, rededicate your life, brothers and sisters. Let God use you. You know the talents that you have, the gifts that you have. Look, those gifts are not for you, they're for somebody else. Somebody needs you. Somebody wants you to say something to them. Your next door neighbor, you live beside them all your life, and you haven't told them about Jesus. That he's a way maker, miracle worker. Listen to this. There's a guy on my job, picture of him. 
Last week, he had been out for a week or so, and I'm wondering what's going on, and our boss, they sent out an email to say that this man had a heart attack, 57 years old. Went to the, went to the hospital, and they told him that if he didn't get a new heart right away, that he was going to die. Man never talked about God, Dr. Bentley. Never talked about Jesus. Whenever I would talk about it, he would always kind of sway and just change the conversation. But he sent out an email this day for people to pray for him. And the people started to pray. And I gave it to my wife. She gave it to her prayer group. I told some of y'all we began to pray. That man was pushed to the front of the list for the next available heart. He got a heart that night. Then before the surgery the next day. And I got the message on my phone that said that the new heart is beating well. All I know is this is only the beginning. Now I need to tell him who gave him that new heart. Who made a way out of no way. That's my mission. That's my mission. That's what we got to do. It's happening every day. It's happening every day. I got a son, y'all know, been locked up for 27 years. 27 years, he got 15 more to go, but you know what happened? He converted to Islam. My wife and I, we just continue to witness to him and witness to him and witness to him and love him and love him and love him. You know what he did about, how long, about six months? Six months ago, he denounced Islam. And I'll tell you how I know it's real. Because when he did it, some of the guys that he was in the Islamic thing with, they tried to kill him. They stabbed him three times in his back, but it didn't hurt him. He got him transferred, and he got to another place, and now all he's doing is giving glory to God. And now, that, 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 that ain't the end of the story. I, I don't know if it's gonna happen or not, but some new things just came up about two or three weeks ago. Those 15 years that he still got to do, he might not have to do but one more. Oh my God, my 